Uh, let's see, how much of a reintroduction do I need to do? Because I guess now we're reporting. So one more time, just for the folks online. Hi, I'm Roy, everyone. Uh, ideally, we're talking about recursion. Does anyone know what recursion is just offhand? A function runs itself. A function runs itself, pretty much that exactly. Way to ruin my first slide. You're welcome. Way to completely ruin my first slide. I mean, I could play <laughs> <laughs> It might be fun. You guys want to just come up here and tease this as one giant collaborative effort? <laughs> Uh, uh, I'm really good at slides. I am, in fact, excellent at slides. I can tell. Um, so these are the ultra boring slides about recursion. And as I stated, you ruined my first slide. But you know, we'll go, we'll go over it. So what is recursion? He ruined it. Uh, it's when a function effectively runs itself. But realistically, I'm going to tell you the same thing that Ken will tell you like half a million times if you haven't already heard it. Billion times already. Don't be lazy, Google it. Um, unluckily, recursion is one of those subject topics where that is actually kind of hard to understand because this is what Wikipedia gives you. Most of the time, subjects like recursion and computer science usually get broken down pretty well in things like Wikipedia. You guys are welcome to read that, but recursion is way easier to understand if you're just willing to just kind of do it instead of, you know, try to understand that mess. Uh, there's tons of videos about it. Uh, it's a topic that I'm excited about because it's one of the few things that you can code in and then get results that you just don't expect. Uh, we'll, we'll, when we start messing with the tree, we'll show you, uh, as Jairus <laughs> pointed out, it, this could be handled by, by modulusing it by 180. But that's no fun, Jairus. If it doesn't break, it's not real code. Uh, so, like I said, it's a, it's a topic I'm excited about because you, you can get crazy stuff out of it. Uh, recursion in and of itself is pretty boring. It's very computer science-y, but he's right. It can be effectively broken down to when code decides to run itself. Uh, the first thing I'm going to talk about is iterative versus recursive. Um, does anyone hazard a guess of what iterative versus recursive is? No? Nobody, nobody wants to talk. Okay, so iterative is effectively when you're just kind of counting up. Iter iterating over something, you guys have all done that, I assume, at this point, when you go through a list and you talk about everything in the list, a for loop, if Specifically, I'm guessing you guys are going through and talking about Python, yes? You guys code in Python so far? Mm -hmm. This is Python class? Well, Python class. JavaScript. Oh, uh, well, Java. well, we're going to have to change up that code real fast. I need to rewrite my slides. <laughs> okay, so uh, iterative is when you're just going step by step, effectively. Uh, one, two, three, all through the number line. If you're iterating through the set of real numbers, you would start it. Ideally, one and then work your way up. You can do that in an example. Four x in range five. You know, typical for loop. Have you guys have you guys used this? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay. okay somebody else is answering. I have one more. One more. <laughs> we'll add on as the night goes. So we'll hope wow. the night. Oh. Oh, this is the morning. This is weird. This yeah. is why. It's this not, is not why morning. It's 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 worse. <laughs> <laughs> That's lunchtime. <laughs> Everybody is asleep first. Uh, so, anyways, recursion can be broken down into several different uh, steps. Iterative, like I said, is just working your way down. Recursive is a little bit different. Uh, you have examples of primitive recursion, which is almost everything that we will do here because it's easy to understand. And once you understand what it's doing, it's you you can you can you can mentally look at it and be like oh okay I understand. Uh, then you have things that are crazy, which are like it's it's called Lou recursive, which is I'm sure some sort of math math term that somebody would probably stab me for doing wrong. But uh, Lou recursion is just that next level of complexity. Do you are you guys familiar with? Complexity. It's an order of magnitude, man. It is indeed. Uh, P versus N P versus. Uh, <laughs> Uh, what what is the other one? NP. No, it's P versus NP. Uh, NP versus what's the last one though? I forgot. There's, 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 
Whatever. Okay. Oh. Uh, anyways, there, there, there are magnitudes of problems, uh, and those magnitudes of problems can be summed up effectively by by p and np in certain cases. In the case of recursion, it's called pr, primitively recursive, r, computably recursive, and re, which is recursively undecided. Um, the most basic way to actually let people understand what all of this means, which I don't think there will be a quiz on any of this because <laughs> I, I would suck at this quiz even if I, and I'm the one giving this presentation. Um, we probably won't touch much of the acronym function, but that's probably the best example of new recursive. And is what new recursive means is once the recursion starts to happen, a computer can eventually figure it out, figure out what it's actually doing. Uh, it might take on the order of several magnitudes of years, but eventually it'll get there. Um, primitive really recursive is uh, effectively a different way of saying it can be done iteratively, but we're doing it in a recursive way to save code, ideally. Uh, Recursively undecided, on the other hand, is something that is so incredibly recursive in nature that you literally cannot get to the end of it. Most of the time, mathematically, a lot of these things have properties that can be decided, but there's a lot of things that it's not going to be able to tell you about it. Like if I gave you a, an even number, mm -hmm. and I said that you're always going to add two or four to it, but I didn't give you an end result to work towards. You could tell me at the end that it's still going to be an even number because all you added to it were, well, even numbers. But with just that information, you can't give me an answer. It could be 2,000. It could be 2 million. It, 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 you can't actually find that answer. You can still tell me something about it, but not what it is. That's the basic breakdown. Uh, recursion gets very, very deep, very, very fast, and it turns into a numbers problem, which is part of why we have to break into this. We're only going to touch primitive, though, because we don't want this. We just don't. Okay, so not just sequence. Does if anyone want that problem? You'll get a million dollars though from the millennia crisis. The P versus NP problem is a million dollar prize. So you can figure it out. And if you solve P versus NP, then you basically break current day encryption. Because yeah. uh, <laughs> current encryption is based on the idea that you have to compute a bunch of numbers to get the end result. Whereas um, it works you well can, one direction, but yeah, uh, screws up the other direction. It, you can do uh, like two to the power of four pretty quickly, but if you have two to the power of something and you don't know what that is, but you know the end result, it'll take you a long time to figure out that it's two to the power of four. One way functions. Except you know the numbers are much bigger. So the, the one way functions, but if you solve p versus np, then you could effectively reverse that. Uh, in the same amount of time that it took to do it. First. You should do semi primes. <laughs> uh, no, no. Uh, <laughs> not right now. Uh, so, some recursive stuff that we're actually going to talk about uh, Fibonacci sequence. Anyone here, a math nerd, know what the Fibonacci sequence is? Or, or, at, very, or at, very le yeah, at very least, a big CSI fan is like, oh, that one episode. No, no, there's no one in here that falls into that cat. There's one in every class, don't lie to me. Uh, factorials, <laughs> do you guys know what factorials are? Yeah, Math nerds, please. I don't, please. Know. I don't exactly so know what they are, but I know it works about them. They become important later on in crypto. Uh, you'll start dealing with them a little bit more. Not so much the Fibonacci sequence, unless you're doing some sort of fancy elliptical curve. Probably not. Um, um, no. Okay, Slater. Oh, okay. Yeah. 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 Then we'll actually break into yeah, something so. that isn't quite as boring uh, and, and actually visualizing yeah, some things that recursion can do because that's actually the fun part. Uh, recursive trees, you guys have messed with turtle a, a lot, a little bit, maybe, once, once. once. We did once accidentally. Yeah, I don't think Kim really goes to turtle. 
Uh, Turtle is like the most fun that you can have in programming, period. Oh, it no. visualizes a bunch of programming things. And it's so much fun, though. Because I mean, make anything. Programming is mostly instruction based. And with Turtle, you have a turtle and you tell it to go straight for this amount and then turn and then go there. It's make instruction based, it teaches you program. It's, it's true. It's, uh, the trees will be fun because, like I said, it's something that you can actually look at. Um, I don't know if we'll go over deep enough to actually draw your own trees, but I mean, I don't cause that. I don't know why we couldn't. Uh, like a stick in the ground could be a tree at that point. Uh, fractals? Anyone know what a fractal is? Again, I've talked about it, but I don't remember. Okay, so a fractal is uh, effectively the, uh, the end result of the coastline paradox. Uh, uh, yeah, see, yeah. see, see, there you go. Now you get to learn something. Um, you guys want to learn what the coastline paradox is? There's YouTube videos. Anyways, a fractal is effectively a thing that you can uh, you can keep zooming in on forever, ever and ever and ever and ever and ever. The end result is uh, is a mathematic function that effectively makes a graphic that repeats itself in an indefinite fashion. Uh, so the closer you zoom in, the more detail it gets. Forever. Uh, you can never visualize the whole thing, obviously, because it is effectively recursively undecided. Once the once the actual picture gets so small, you can only focus on so much. Uh, these are some things that we might talk about. Not really uh, the coast triangle, the Ackerman function, which we will not code, but we might touch on, uh, and the towers of Hanoi. Anyone know the little the little game? Okay, so we do have some game nerds. Thank you. <laughs> uh, so, first thing we're going to talk about is the Fibonacci sequence. Uh, it's called the golden ratio. It's significant in a lot of math or science or something. I, honestly, I'm not entirely sure. I just, I just know that it exists and I know that it can be recursively derived. Uh, oops, that's really it. So, the thing with the Fibonacci sequence is you start off with one and zero. Zero and one to be. Yeah, there. Yeah, I don't know if I should like draw this out. So well, the problem understand. is that people online won't see what you're drawing. Oh, uh, this is true. Well, well I mean, they kind of can. can. Go ahead. We'll try. Do it. We'll try. Do it. Thanks, Jerris. If you uh, can get the cap off the mark. Just open Microsoft Paint. Man, this is going to be the best video of the year. <laughs> <I know. laughs> it's going to be bad. Uh, so you start with zero and one, and then you add the numbers that are behind it. So you start with zero and one, and you don't have to be a genius. What's what is the next one? number? <laughs> one. Uh, and again. Two. And again. Three, four, five. Four? Four is going to be the four, number. Five, <laughs> it's not a number in there. So, so now you're just adding these. So yeah, on and on and on and on into five. infinity. Uh, it, it gives you the right there. I mean, it, does everyone understand how that is derived? There's a lot of in, interesting things that you can do with the Fibonacci sequence. Realistically, the only thing we're going to care about here is coding it yeah. uh, because it is a recursive set. Uh, which, which, which brings us into the actual code part. Uh, this is the part that everyone hates or loves. Well, the is really. Do it yourself, <laughs> Anyways, uh, yeah, everybody online has heard that. Yeah. Ken's going to have to edit that just because of you. It's all your fault. Uh, uh, da, 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 da. You thought I'm already proposed? No, I'm not prepared. What's wrong with you? Oh, yeah. It's, Honestly, a, it's actually a thing. Fib is a, um... No, Fib is not a thing. Fib is a thing that I made. Uh, so, <laughs> so realistically, all the code is right there for you. Uh, it's it's actually astoundingly simple. If you look at it, it's it's. I won't go as far as to say it boggles the mind. It's a little bit confusing, but if you just talk through it, it is not bad. So you have here a definition of a function called Fib. Yes? Everyone's done this so far? Everybody's made functions? Yeah? Let's see if I can actually make this not tiny. I believe he has it set to the biggest. Uh, da, 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 da. 
and bigger. The bigger is. Oh. And you can put that in a thing that we use in here called a REPL. And so you can run it in REPL on the screen in front of all of us. Oh, I talked them into doing it so that we would have access to everything we take throughout the semester. Yeah, you know, we can do our in class assignments from home. I've never heard of that. I will, I will, I will, I'll just dump Another this. Time. I'll just dump this code on the cluster of fucking my first try. Regardless, so you don't actually, this is for something completely different. The basics of the code are very simple though, and you'll notice that this doesn't take a whole lot of code, which is kind of the glory of recursion because you don't want to write your code a half million times. Anyway, so you start out and you call fib and you give it a number. If that number is one, it returns one. So far, pretty simple. Start off with a graph example, two, three, five. Okay. So you probably can't see the five. And you'll notice that if it's the first position, the first Fibonacci number is what? One, exactly. So you basically have to define that because, well, it's kind of a rule. Or if it's position zero, what is the zeroth of the Fibonacci sequence? Why are you subtracting it, uh, one from it when you get to your return statement at the end? It seems like that's an unnecessary step. Oh, well, it's very necessary for it to be recursive. Yeah, but what if it's a one that they submit? Okay, so, <laughs> okay, so what if it's not a one? If it's <laughs> uh, so <coughs> let's, like I said, let's step through the code. The zero position of the Fibonacci sequence, if it is zero, it'll hit zero and return zero. The first position, if it is one, will hit the one and return a one. Here's where it gets a little bit, a little bit more hectic just because fib is in here, so it's calling itself. The recursive series, by definition, that's what you're looking for if it is a recursive piece of code. Fib, fib. Recursive. That's all you really need. To, if you take anything away from this at all, that's what you need to know. This is defining a function. This function is calling itself. And that makes it recursive? And that's what makes it recursive. Okay. From here is what we're actually asking it is to give us the Fibonacci number in this position. To know what the Fibonacci number in this position is, you have to know what the Fibonacci numbers in these positions are, correct? Because you have to know what the previous numbers are. <laughs> what if you don't start from the beginning? What if I gave you five to start? Okay, so in that case, you would have five, and it wouldn't know what the rest of the numbers are. So how would you find out what the next sequence Oh, well, that's this position mind. of the Fibonacci sequence. Ah, I get it. Gotcha. You got it? Okay. Yep. So it's... That's clever. So... That's why you did it recursively. Yeah. Exactly. It, it's, like I said, it's to save code. Now, I'm not going to lie to you. Now, I'm not going to say this is the best way to write code. <laughs> once, once this gets to, like, 40-ish, the numbers get outlandishly yeah. huge, and it takes forever to actually run. And we'll see that in a little bit. Uh, Anyway, so the, the first thing that you need to understand is this is a Fibonacci sequence asking for what the position <coughs> is. What Fibonacci number do you want to know what it is? So if you wanted to say no, the zero, one, two, three, four, five, convenient. The fifth Fibonacci number, anyone offhand? No, it's five. It's five. The fifth Fibonacci number is five. So wait, wait, wait one second though. But it could assume that if you give it a Fibonacci number of five, that mm -hmm. the previous number was three, because how else could it be a Fibonacci number unless three was the previous number? Because it can't be a Fibonacci number and be five unless three was the previous one. But would that only work if it understands how the Fibonacci sequence works? Mm -hmm. See where I'm going? So that's why it calls Fibonacci. So in order to get the Fibonacci of five, you first have to get the Fibonacci uh, for spot four, and the Fibonacci for spot three. That's why it calls it so. 
The, the most important thing to understand about the Fibonacci sequence is it requires you to have previous knowledge. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. In order, okay. Once it calls itself, it goes through, and in order to find the Fibonacci sequence for four, it must first call Fibonacci on three and Fibonacci on two, aka uh, four minus one and four minus two. So and it keeps spiraling downward. <laughs> into a terrible, terrible little hole. That's Anyways, let's let's <laughs> let's do it slightly different. That way we can all actually see kind of how it works. Let's say we fed this three, because that's the lowest number that would actually allow us to use all of our functions. Anyone offhand, what is the third Fibonacci number? Yeah, it's one. It's not super hard to compute but it needs all the previous information. So say I ran fib of three. What is it gonna do? <coughs> X equals one. False. Does, do, right, it's false, so we skip that completely. Does X equal zero? False. false, skips that completely. So it drops into this and it says, okay, what is the Fibonacci number of before three effectively? So we fill in the blanks. Three is X right now, so Fibonacci of three minus one. What is three minus one? What is three minus two? One. Effectively is what it's doing is it's saying, so for me to find the Fibonacci number in the third position, I first need the Fibonacci number in the second position and the Fibonacci number in the first position. That makes sense? Oh, the X is the position, not the, not the number. Right? There you go. Ah, there okay. you go. Sorry, that should be more clear. X is a is Fair a enough. Day, that's why, a that's why I say that's step through the code. Yeah, it makes okay. it so much easier. This is why you comment. Ah, no, now, okay. just a fair. He has a point. Yeah, and you did. Well, for this. for this, I have other things that are common through. The tree is common through the sounding well. We'll go over that later. Now, two goes up here, and we run fib on. Two. Right. Now, now, unfortunately, we have to effectively just take this whole code base and just put all of this in hibernation and say, okay, two. So now we'll do it in a different color. Now this is the second run, and it says, okay, so let's run this one, since this is the Fibonacci of two. So Fib of two, is that one? No, it would be one plus zero. So. It would be one plus zero, so that, that's, that's, it's not one. It's not zero, so that means for it to find the Fibonacci number in part two, it would then have to go and find the Fibonacci of two minus one. Right, so two minus one, and two minus two. Now, two minus one, is anyone a math nerd? Come on, what is two minus one? One. <laughs> There's a blue one. in there if you need it. <laughs> right, this, gets, this gets really confusing real fast, and I'm sorry. Uh, they're not easy to draw by definition, so. so and two minus two, anyone? Two, one, two, one, zero. Okay, good job. We finally get to end our chain, finally, and we get to say, okay, so 2 minus 1 is the Fibonacci sequence of 2, and that's 1. So we're going to come up here and we're going to say, okay, is 1 equal to 1? Yeah. Yes. Thank God, because we don't want to play this game anymore, Lord. Right? <laughs> <laughs> and so it returns 1, because we effectively know what the base Fibonacci number is, which is 0 and 1. It's the same sequence over and over and over again. You can, you so the result of fib2 is 1 plus 0. Right, because that is Fibonacci's, the, the Fibonacci sequence, 1 and 0. Then we must step out again back to the, uh, the, the function for 3, fib3, three, and yeah, finish the second one. You could easily <laughs> adapt this so that you could feed it two arguments, position and the number, so that you would uh, find the next Fibonacci on the second argument and find the Fibonacci on the other. Well, we can make this. We can make this so much more efficient. Yeah, yeah. Oh, sure. We can make this so much more efficient. It's ridiculous. This is by definition what recursion is kind of supposed to do, though. Uh, Mind, it's not super impressive in this specific case because it's literally having to rewrite literally everything that it's doing literally more than once. But in this specific case, that's 
the easiest way just to get a baseline definition. This would deal with everything that would give you the definition for what a Fibonacci number is. It's an easy way to look at it and be like, oh, okay, this is recursive. All right. So imagine if x was 50. That's why this is so inefficient, because for 50, it first has, has to figure out 48 and 49, which require you to figure out 46 and 47 and 47 and 48. What happens when you feed this a huge number? It takes forever. Yes. It, it takes absolutely Okay, so forever. what happens when you feed it a, a four-digit number? For 50, I think it takes a minute. Really? So, Something and like it gets ex exponential. Uh, so let's say for 51, mm -hmm. a long hey, time. Can you, can we're you not going to figure out. out. We're not going to figure out. 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 resources at the same time. Uh, so the thing is, because each one requires the one before it, you cannot. Um, you're going through all of them all the way back and then building it back forward. Actually, you're going yeah. through all of them twice. That's yeah, that's what I'm saying. Backwards and forwards. You, like you, I said, there's far yeah. better ways to actually do this, but we're displaying this in a recursive just, fashion. So, anyways, yeah, so fib, I don't know, 20? You think 20 ought to do it? It's not super impressive, okay? It's, it's, it's basically just that. But say, say we wanted to know the Fibonacci number for some ridiculously crazy large number. I don't want to do 50. It's going to take forever. Okay, 40. Does anyone know what that is offhand? I certainly don't. It apparently doesn't. No, because it's a geometric pro progression. It gets bigger every single time. Mm -hmm. And it's going gonna, it's gonna to get quite a lot bigger, this, this one. Yeah, just it's logarithmic. It's not 10 times bigger. It's like 30 times bigger or something like that. And that's the interesting thing with uh, recursion in general. You change one thing, and suddenly your change propagates exponentially. So it's hard to understand, but at the same time, it can do so much. That's crazy that 20 took a second. Yeah. It stayed way, way long. Oh, yeah. And it literally has to re-derive everything. Well, what's the log difference between 20 and, and what did you think, 30? 40. Uh, it should be like, I don't know. I, I don't know. Okay. You're, you're asking math questions in a coding class. I don't know. Well, I mean, I could also just calculate the base time. <laughs> Ah, uh, anyways, move on. yeah, let's move on. You can do like 30, you won't be crazy. Yeah, 30 should work just fine. 30 should be almost instant. Yeah, yeah, so it also helps that the Fibonacci sequence, the numbers get massive and very short magnitude. Uh, so, like I said, probably the big thing I want you guys to actually take out of this is <laughs> the fact that this no longer matters. The fact that this right here is what actually makes it recursive code. The function that calls itself. Of course, it has to change each time, or you're just going to call yourself infinitely. Oh, sure. Which is a small problem. Python does have a recursion dev. You can only call the same function from within itself so many times. I think it's like a thousand times. If this gets beyond that, then it'll throw an error. You can handle the error and keep going if you want, but Python wants to make sure that you know what you're doing. Because, uh, the, well, recursive code can very easily get out of hand very quickly. I don't even have any good examples of what recursive code would ideally be used on, I suppose. I would love to ask what's the best use for this. You use it in a database all the time if you have to go through like each individual customer and then do something to each portion of their table and then move back through the table and then back up to the next customer almost. That would be a recursive. It, it's that nice. would actually be more No, good. okay. Um, so so it's, it really is. It's kind of hard to explain. Recursion, the almost exclusive use for it is for things that are going to be at their very base, they have to be re-derived every time. So, and things that you want to be able to change massive amounts of massive amounts of data that all derive from the same thing all at once. We'll kind of talk about that during the tree, kind of. 
But the only reason that's really relevant is just because it gives you a sense of exactly how much it can change all at once. And some problems can't be solved without recursion. Like the, the undecided ones are where a computer has to go through each and every time in order to find the next uh, answer. Like if you're zooming in on, you know, like real life things, you can get down to the molecular level.